Hi there, Stephanie here. I recently heard from some teachers in the intermediate grades, third through sixth grade, that they didn't really think there was much value in oral reading fluency as an assessment in those grade levels. And I thought, what a great question, what a great topic to be thinking about. Because obviously in those intermediate grades, the focus of instruction, the goal is around reading comprehension. And what a great way to find out how your students are doing in terms of reading comprehension with oral reading fluency. So this is um, a topic that's really worth exploring. There's a lot here because it turns out that oral reading fluency, giving students a passage of text they haven't seen before, asking them to read for a minute, counting the words correct, the errors, asking them to talk about what they've read afterwards is an excellent index of reading comprehension. And there's 40 years or so of research about that relationship between oral reading fluency and reading comprehension. And here I'm talking about formal or standardized measures of oral reading fluency, like you would find in Acadian's Reading or Dibble's Eighth or Fast Bridge, not informal things that teachers would create or something you'd find uh, on the internet, but a standardized oral reading fluency assessment. It turns out that the correlation between words correct per minute on an oral reading fluency measure is highly correlated with reading comprehension, pretty much any way you want to measure reading comprehension. It, the correlation might be somewhere around 0.6 or 0.7 in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, which is really a strong relationship. And the relationship is in both directions, right? But it tells us that students who are accurate and fluent are very likely to be understanding what they're reading, maybe six or seven out of 10 of them. And students who are not accurate and fluent are not probably understanding what they're reading. So it's a really awesome way in one minute to get a quick snapshot of reading comprehension. And, and that's really valuable in those grade levels where reading comprehension is what represents your standards, what students will be tested on at the end of year um, achievement testing or, or state assessments for accountability. So a couple of really important purposes for this oral reading fluency in grades three through six. First of all, for universal screening, um, not just for identifying who might be at risk, but also for identifying the needs of the grade level. So if your practice is to do something um, in the classroom like novel study or to be focused in instruction on comprehension, it would be really helpful to know the percentage of students in your grade level who can actually understand the text that they'll be expected to read in that grade level. And screening with oral reading fluency will tell you exactly that information. So let's say you end up finding out that only a 30% of your students in fourth grade can understand grade level text or only half of your students, right? That would make some changes in what you're doing with everybody in your classroom. It also might inform your planning around the intervention supports that are needed in uh, grades three through six. So you might find out that you've got a large proportion of students at your grade level who are going to need some kind of intervention. It might cause you to plan something like an intervention block in your daily schedule. You can also use oral reading fluency in the intermediate grades to do some very purposeful grouping. So using the screening data with oral reading fluency to identify the exact skills that students have and don't have, or to indicate the skills that students have or don't have. Some really clear patterns will emerge just from the one minute screening, and that can lead you into some additional steps for assessment and instruction. So let me quickly map out for you four groups that you're likely to see after oral reading fluency screening in grades three through six. You're gonna have that group of students who are just right on track. Their ORF scores are gonna indicate that they are accurate, they are fluent, and they are understanding what they're reading. Those are your high flyers. They're ready to go with your grade level curriculum, working towards your grade level standards as is move forward. The second group of students are those who are accurate and fluent on ORF, but not indicating that they're understanding what they're reading. 
these are the, you know, three or maybe four out of 10 students whose words correct and reading comprehension aren't aligned. And it could be a misalignment in either direction. So you might need some additional assessment with that group of students, but you're probably going to need to know more about that group who are accurate and fluent, but not understanding what they're reading with a diagnostic assessment. And for that purpose, I would suggest Acadian's reading diagnostic for comprehension, fluency, and oral language, often called CFOL, C-F-O-L. The third group of students who might emerge from screening in grades three through six would be students who are accurate, but not yet fluent readers. Their reading comprehension is going to be impacted by not reading fluently. So this category of students might be good uh, contenders for a repeated reading approach to instruction or intervention. And then the fourth group is the most concerning. These are the students who are not accurate in that text that they're expected to read at their grade level. If they're not accurate, we don't want them to be fluent. We don't want them reading more quickly. And they're probably not understanding what they're reading. And from that one minute screener, we're going to have to go deeper with some additional assessment. We're going to need diagnostic assessment in the phonics and decoding skills. We might need to do survey level assessment testing back to find the lower level of oral reading fluency, or even uh, prior to that, uh, the indicators like nonsense word or phoneme segmentation, where the student actually can reach the goals, where their skill level is. So surveying back is gonna be helpful with that group of students. So we're gonna have to go beyond the screener with that fourth group, most definitely, to find out exactly where to pinpoint their instruction. But you can see how uh, sort of that gap between students who are on track and not on track really increases in those intermediate grades. And it's very useful to have a screening tool like ORF that will help you differentiate among those groups. And then finally, a really powerful use of oral reading fluency in the intermediate grades is for monitoring progress. And for this, I mean formal progress monitoring, not just checking in informally occasionally, but using oral reading fluency weekly or every other week to track students' growth over time. Because the oral reading fluency difficulty level is held constant, it will allow you to see learning happening in real time, right in front of your eyes on a graph. And this is so powerful for instructors to be able to see if students are tracking towards the goal that you've set or not. Uh, and we need to know that before the next screening time, we need to know it very quickly. If students are not improving their skills with the instruction that we're currently providing, with the current intervention, let's say, then we need to be able to make a change right away. And that is essential because we don't have a minute to waste with those older struggling readers. So is oral reading fluency the only comprehension assessment that you need in the intermediate grades? No. Is it the only way to measure reading comprehension? No. But I think I have communicated some thoughts that might cause you to ask some additional questions, gain some more information and consider adopting the use of this powerful assessment tool in the intermediate grades.